Hi, I'm Chris from ProM Racing. In this segment, we're going to talk about basic tuning using the ProM EFI engine management system. First, I should start by saying you don't need to know any of what we're about to talk about. Your ProM EFI processor already contains a tune that will run your engine beautifully right out of the box. All you need to do is enter some basic information that was covered in the installation video. That's really all there is to it. Use this video as a training tool only if you want to learn how to tune. Learning how all this stuff works can be a lot of fun, but if you don't care to learn how to tune, then this video isn't for you. Let's start with the basics. An engine needs four things in order to run. Those things are air, fuel, spark, and compression. Keep these basics in mind whenever you're tuning. It's also helpful to keep these in mind when doing diagnostics. If it doesn't run right, it has to be one of these four things. Narrow it down to which of the four it is, then figure out what the problem is. On the subject of diagnostics, and I can't stress this enough, if you're using our base tune with the parameters we discussed in the installation video entered correctly, and it doesn't run properly, the tune is not the problem. The nature of the way this system works means that the base tune provided with the Pro EFI system will run your engine properly. There are no exceptions. Additional tuning beyond the basics should only be used to potentially enhance the performance of the engine, never to fix any real problems. You do need to have the basic parameters entered into the tune in order for it to run properly. Those basics are cylinder bore, stroke, number of cylinders, fuel injector slopes, MAF transfer function, and O2 sensor type. You should also enter a value for the rev limiter, although this is not technically necessary for it to run properly. Setting these parameters is covered in the installation video, so by now these should be already done. For the most part, those are the only parameters that the vast majority of tuners will ever touch. If they are correct and it does not run properly, you have a problem that is not related to engine management. The most common mistakes we find are fuel supply system related. You'll find a video on our website detailing proper fuel supply system design as well as other how-to videos. You should watch every one of them. You'll most likely learn something and will likely find out that there's things wrong with your car that you didn't even know about and that need to be fixed. Okay, back to tuning. There are two basics that you'll need to understand in order to begin tuning. These things are load and lambda. First, let's talk about load. Load is sort of like volumetric efficiency, but it's much simpler and much more accurate. Load is defined as the mass of the air being ingested by the engine divided by the engine's potential for air mass. The mass of the air being ingested by the engine in any given time is simply the value being provided by the mass airflow meter. The engine's potential for air mass is simply the mass of the air that would be in the engine if all of the cylinders were full. It's a bit more complex than that, but that definition is good enough for you to understand the basics of how this works. A load of 1 would be an engine running at 100% efficiency. In other words, the mass of the air entering the engine would equal the engine's potential for air mass. A load of 0.1 would be an engine running at 10% efficiency. A load of 2 would be an engine at 200% efficiency, or in other words, an engine with a lot of boost due to forced induction. A load of 0.85 is about all you'll ever see with most naturally aspirated engines. Loads over 0.85 are achieved with forced induction since the supercharger or the turbocharger can force more air mass into the engine than it would otherwise ingest on its own. This one operating principle is the biggest reason why we're so different from the other guys, and it's only possible with a mass air system. It eliminates the guesswork, it simplifies the strategy used, it makes the system much more accurate and user friendly than anything else out there. This also explains why the basics of the tune that I mentioned earlier are so important. Bore, stroke, and number of cylinders allows the processor to calculate the engine's potential for air mass. The mass air transfer function allows the processor to interpret the signal from the mass air meter properly. And the fuel injector parameters allow the processor to properly calculate the correct pulse width for the fuel injectors in order to deliver the proper amount of fuel. These basics must be correct. The other thing you need to understand is lambda. Lambda is another way of looking at air to fuel ratio. Most people are used to thinking in terms of air to fuel ratio. The problem with air to fuel ratio is that the needed ratio is different for each type of fuel. Lambda, however, represents the needed ratio regardless of the type of fuel being used. Let me explain. Most people know that the stoichiometric air to fuel ratio for gasoline is 14.7 to 1. 
But what about the other fuels? E10, which is 10% ethanol, and is what the vast majority of people are burning these days, has a stoichiometric air to fuel ratio of 14.2 to 1. E85 ranges from about 10 to 1 to 12 to 1, depending on how much alcohol is actually in the fuel, which varies by location and by climate. So you can see the potential problems associated with tuning using air to fuel ratio. However, lambda for stoichiometric, regardless of the type of fuel, is 1. So the benefit of tuning in lambda is simple. One fuel table works with all types of fuels. To change the type of fuel you're using, you simply change the value in the stoichiometric AFR parameter in your tune. Leave the base fuel table alone. You need to understand these two things because the Proem EFI processor calculates the needed fuel delivery and the needed spark advance based on those principles. If you want to tune, you need to understand them. Thinking in terms of load is easy. Making your brain stop thinking in terms of AFR may be a little more difficult because you've been thinking that way for so long. But get used to thinking in terms of lambda. Once you get used to lambda, you'll see that it's really much simpler. Our system is the only one on the market that allows you to tune this way. The bottom line is, if you're using somebody else's product, you're working way too hard and likely not getting the results you want. Let's go over the basics of using this software. Once you've learned the basics, the rest of it becomes self-explanatory. Let's first look at the base fuel table. You'll see that the load values go vertically and the RPM values go horizontally. The desired lambda values are entered into the table. You'll see that the commanded lambda at low loads and low RPM is 1. You'll also notice that the lambda values get smaller as the RPM and or load increases. Lambda values less than 1 indicate an AFR richer than stoichiometric. The smaller the number, the more fuel. Numbers higher than 1 indicate an AFR leaner than stoichiometric. The larger the number, the leaner the mixture. To study the table for a minute is to realize the genius of calculating the needed fuel in this manner. You'll notice that the load values go all the way up to 1.9. Remember, loads over 0.85 are for forced induction. What this means is that one fuel table will not only work with a variety of fuels, it'll also work with any engine combination. Keep in mind, we know what the optimum lambda is for any given load versus RPM. It doesn't matter what the engine is, or what the cam is, or what heads it has. All that matters is a given load at a given RPM requires a given lambda. Those values are already in the tune for you. This is not to say that tweaking these a bit can't give you more power. It might, but remember, any tune is always a blend of three things. Power, drivability, and fuel economy. The rules are simple. In order to have more of one of these, you need to give up some of the other two. A good tune is a good combination of all three. A tune that gives maximum power, but poor economy and poor drivability may be great for the drag strip, but it's not much good in the real world. The fuel table provided in the tune will give you a very good combination of all three. For the most part, it should be left alone. If you want to adjust it, this is most easily done by switching to the working page and tuning on the fly. This allows you to see the results of your changes instantly. You may also want to use the pot box. This allows simple one-click tuning and can be used with any 2D or 3D table in the tune. You simply drag the table into the pot box and start tuning. F1 and F2 will change the values in the table, and F3 will undo the last change. This allows you to tune without watching the screen on the laptop. This is especially useful if you want to watch your widebands while you're making adjustments. One thing you need to know about using the pot box. Let's say you click F1 to change the value, but then decide that you don't like that change. Do not click F2 to undo it. You will not be in exactly the same place on the table anymore, so F2 will simply make another change on another part of the table. To undo a change, click Undo. That will undo your last change. Now let's look at the base spark table. In the tune, the base spark table is called DBL Spark. Look familiar? It should. Load values are vertical and RPM values are horizontal. The desired advance is entered into the table. We should note two things. One, the entries in the table are advanced on top of the base timing, which is 10 degrees. So if the commanded advance looks too low, add 10 and it'll all make sense. Two, if you look at the advance at low load and low RPM, then add 10, the numbers look awfully high. 
but the processor pulls 10 degrees at idle and uses this 10 degrees to control idle speed. Yes, idle speed. An engine reacts to changes in timing much quicker than it does to changes in airflow. The idle air control solenoid is a useful tool to control idle speed, but changing the timing in advance is much more effective for quick changes in engine RPM. Again, to study the table for a minute is to realize the genius of calculating the needed advance in this manner. You'll notice that the load values go all the way up to 2. Remember, loads over 0.85 are for forced induction. What this means is that one spark table pretty much does it all. You'll see that the advanced value for loads over 0.85 get less and less as load increases. This is the easiest way to pull timing for boost. Pretty easy, right? To say that this spark table is absolutely perfect for every engine would be untrue. Optimum spark advance is best figured out on the dyno. There are an awful lot of factors that go into tuning spark advance for optimum power. A skilled tuner understands this. That said, this table is excellent as is for most any engine, naturally aspirated or forced induction, and does not need to be adjusted. The vast majority of you should just leave it alone. This spark table is an absolute work of art compared to the advance resulting from using an old weights and springs distributor. The same is true of those so-called self-tuning EFI systems, which have no provision at all for controlling spark. What that means is that fuel-only systems are still using archaic methods for controlling spark advance. For that reason alone, these systems should be avoided. Now let's look at the mass air transfer function. This is listed as MAF transfer in the tune. It's a simple table with voltage values in the left column and air mass values in the right column. Note that this table, as well as any other one, can be viewed in either English or metric by clicking on the English metric button at the top of the screen. The reason I mention this is because the default setting when you open the tuning software is English. However, the transfer function you receive with your mass air meter will most likely be in metric units. Just click on the button if you want to enter the tune in metric units. Also notice that the unit of measure for the air mass values is either pounds per hour or kilograms per hour. Make sure that the units you are entering match what the software is asking for. For instance, if you are provided with air mass units in pounds per minute, You'll need to multiply those values by 60 in order to get values in pounds per hour. Also notice that all the values are in ascending order. This is the case with all the tables in the software. They must be entered this way. It is critical that the mass air transfer function you are entering be accurate. If the meter is a ProM, then the provided transfer function is accurate. If it's not a ProM, you are likely not provided with a transfer function at all. If you were, the data provided is likely inaccurate. If the meter is not a ProM, it can be sent into ProM to have an accurate transfer function generated on our flow bench. You may be asked to ship the meter with whatever will be attached to its inlet when it's installed in the car. This is especially important if the meter will be used in a blow-through application. Call before you ship if you're unsure what to do. These parameters are for your programmable outputs. Programmable output A64 comes right out of the box set up for a shift light that will come on at 4500 RPMs. You would just connect the wire for A64 to the ground side of the light. Looking at how the parameters are set up for this simple function will give you an idea how it works and how to set it up for whatever you want to make it do. Another example of how to set up a little more complex programmable output would be the parameters for the AC cutoff relay. You'll see that this one uses two variables to control the relay. Programmable outputs, depending on the complexity of what you want to control, can require a bit of thought and trial and error to set up properly. Think about what you need the output to do and then use a combination of variables that will suit the need. Remember that anytime you make a change, you should save the tune under a different name and leave the old tune untouched. That way you can always go back to the old one if you have a problem. Also remember that the tune is not actually in the processor until you write it to the processor. As you can see, there are an awful lot of parameters in here, and at first it can seem overwhelming. But remember, about 99% of these are things you're never going to touch. They are preset and for the most part should be left alone. That said, you'll find a list of tuning parameter definitions on our website. This will explain what each and every one of these tuning parameters does. It's very educational, even liberating to scroll through the parameters and see what each one does. 
Doing so will give you an education about how a good system works and all the things that go into it. I encourage you to do so, even if you have no desire to tune. That's it for the tuning segment. Remember to check out our website at ProAmRacing.com for other helpful videos. Until next time, I'm Chris Richards for ProAmRacing.